We're going to open up, um, we're going to begin once again with the book of Proverbs. Start back and try to get through it this time, because the last time we didn't get through it. So um, hopefully we could get through the book of Proverbs this time. We're going to start in the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Mousy, give me my glasses. So Proverbs are basically set up as instructions. <laughs> King Solomon wrote the Proverbs, but a lot of what we see in Proverbs is basically instructions that his father Melech Dawi was giving him. They said the apple don't fall too far from the tree, mm -hmm. right? So if Solomon is a wise and understanding person, um, Obviously, he got that from somewhere. And um, that somewhere had to have been his father, Melech Dawi, and his mother, perhaps his mother, Bathsheba, right? But that understanding came from somewhere, right? And um, he was the wisest man that ever lived. He was attributed with the title as the wisest man that ever lived. So Melech um, Shalomo... He, what he did is, he influenced, let me make sure I got my notes here ready. All right. He influenced a lot of people in that time, um, and he brought up the standard of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel had to be brought up to a certain standard because of what his father, Melech Dawi, left for him to build for the nation. So... That was a blessing in itself. Um, Solomon, as we know, he indulged in too many women. He indulged in, he built houses of worship to his nashim, to, to strange gods. And that caused the kingdom to be split, right? At the point, it wasn't done in Solomon's time, but when his son came, this kingdom was split to a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The southern kingdom being the kingdom of Judah. So this is the same Solomon that we're speaking about. Let's see if we could get through these, these chapters. I'm not sure we are, but let's go. Proverbs We're in the book of Proverbs, one. chapter 1, verse 1, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Mm -hmm. To know wisdom and instruction, to comprehend the words of understanding, to receive the discipline of wisdom, justice, and right, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and, and, and discretion, that the wise man may hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding may attain unto wise counsels. The man, of, it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to comprehend the words of understanding, to receive the discipline of wisdom, justice, right, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, that the wise man may hear and increase in learning, and the man of understanding may attain unto wise counsels. Now, Everybody know, everybody know the artist Takashi 6 ix 9 right? Mm. Y'all know who Takashi is, right? He got the big 6 9 on his face. Rainbow head kid. So, he was, he, and you're going to say, how are you linking Takashi to the, the Proverbs of Solomon? Now, here it is. It says that the wise man may hear and increase in learning, and the man of understanding may attain unto wise counsels, right? It says to give prudence to the simple and the young man knowledge and discretion. So he decided that he wanted to play tough. You know, he wasn't a tough kid, but he got into, he got involved with these guys, these gang um, members, and they were his protection. And they will add his beck and call. Go do this, they'll do it. Go do that, they'll do it. So in the midst of doing all of these things, the Fed started investigating him. You doing shootouts at the Barclays Center. You robbing people, people getting shot in your presence. And you're right there. Now, understanding don't tell you 
This is the money cow. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do some dirt, we're not going to do it around him because that's going to interrupt our money. They said, no, he's going to be involved, and he wanted to be involved in these things. So what happened? The feds pick him up, told him, um, yeah, you know them people that you're working with? Who you hanging with? You need to stop this. You need to stop that. You have a successful career. And you didn't listen when the feds came down. Now you're sitting in a federal prison in Brooklyn, and now you're singing like a bird. Now you're telling them where everything is at, where it happened, what time it happened, how it happened, who was there. And these are people you sent out to do things. So you don't want to be like that person. So the best thing to do is to listen to the instructions that you get off this misbiot. So that you don't follow that track. You see, I, relate, I talk to the children. You know why? Because y'all like Takashi. Y'all like Migos. Talk it, like it, walk it. Walk it, like it, talk it. Right? You like, you like it. Listen, we were young. We listened to N.W. All, although our teachers are telling us, you shouldn't be listening to N.W.A. You shouldn't be listening to Snoop Doggy Dog. We was listening to that stuff. So we could tell y'all, don't listen to Migos. Don't listen to Takashi. Don't listen to Trippy Red. Don't listen to, to, um... Tentacion, don't listen to all these guys and you're going to still listen to them. You're going to listen to, you're going to listen to Nicki Minaj, you're going to listen to Cardi B, you're going to listen to them. But what we're trying to, to show you is this. What we're trying to make you understand is this. What they're telling you is not more important than this. The discretion and the, and the knowledge that you're going to get from this is going to save your life. You think if Daniel Hernandez, a.k.a. Takashi 69 got a whiff of this and he would have understood it, you think he'd be locked up? So you have to find yourself, we're living in a world in a concrete jungle where a lot of things happen. Things go left, go right. But you have to put yourself in a, in, 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 in a frame of mind where you're going to protect yourself from all the things that are surrounding you. Because you have to survive. We're not telling you to be a hermit, we're not telling you to do any of those things, but what we are telling you is to have discretion. And you know what discretion is? Discretion is the ability to make the right decisions right. at the time that you need to make. Right. Right. So if you have discretion, you will know what you, what you say y'all gonna do? I'll take a, uh, I'm gonna skip that one. I'll, I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow. You might not see them tomorrow because what they went to do, they might have not came back from that mission. Let us go. Verse 6. To understand the proverb and the figure, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. To understand the proverb and a what? And the, and the figure. Right. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. This thing is supposed to be like facial detection. They ain't detecting my face. There it goes. To understand a proverb, so we heard proverbs like a hard head makes a what? Soft behind. Soft behind. So what does that mean? What what does a hard head makes a soft behind mean? It means that when you don't listen, like like Marina told me in another way, like your mouth wants to feel that you're behind can't take. Right. <laughs> All right. And That's another one. Your mouth writes a check that your behind can't catch. Right? You, you, you keep running your mouth. That means you keep running your mouth or you, you act like you're tough. Right? And then somebody tests that, test all that talk that you're doing. You got to be able to catch that check. Meaning you got to be able to put these up and defend yourself. If you're going to do all that talking. But what that means when it says a hard head makes a soft behind, it means that if you don't like listening, right? If you don't like listening, that you're going to get a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. That's what that means. Growing up, I heard things like in Spanish, árbol que nace torcido jamás su tronco endereza. 
So what that means is, Shavani, you know what that means? Árbol que nace torcido, jamás su tronco endereza. So that means a tree that's, that's born bent, right, or crooked, will never straighten out. You don't want to be labeled a tree that's born crooked or twisted because people are going to say, that boy been like that all his life. Hmm. He ain't never going to change. You never want to be labeled that. It says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. These are things that you have to take, and these are things that will help you in your life. These are the sayings in the Proverbs, right? Mm -hmm. From the Caribbean, people tell you things like, boy, if you make your bed, you have to lie in it. You know what that means? When you make your bed, you got to lie in it? Anybody can tell me what that means. You make your bed, you got to lie in it. Any one of you. You make your bed, you got to lie in it. Moshe, you make your bed, you got to lie in it. What that means? You got to deal with the consequences. So the things that you do, don't, because you got parents that go like this. Listen, boy, let me tell you this. You got parents that sit you down and tell you this. Listen, listen here, boy. Listen here, girl. Let me tell you this. You see that money I work for? It's for me and my wife so we could retire, not to pay all your court bills, not to pay everything, to go bail you out and stuff like that. So when you get yourself into trouble, right, when you get yourself into trouble, Think very well about what you're doing because I'm not coming to get you. You can forget about me sending you packages because this is not what I put you on this earth to do. So when you make your bed, the path that you're walking in, you got to lie in it. You have to accept the consequences that come with it. These are the teachings that we're giving you so that you will be conscious and you understand there's a lot of temptations in the world. There's a lot of things that reach out to you that tell you, come, they look enticing. And guess what? Sometimes you take hold of them. But is it right for you to take hold of them? So these proverbs and this wisdom that Solomon gave us is for us to be able to walk in a righteous path, for us to be able to understand how to live and how to survive in these streets. These proverbs never get played out. They are relevant today. If you, pay, if you pay attention to them, let us go. Verse 7. Verse 7. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and discipline. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of your learning. So learn to fear Yahuwah. Right. Because when you learn to fear Yahuwah, that's the beginning of your real learning. Right. You see, going to school, two plus two is four. Yeah, that's learning on one level. But learning about life, you can't replace that. That's the fear of Yahuwah. And once you start to learn about life, that's going to take you, once you start learning this Torah, that's going to take you further than anything. Let us go. Hear, my son, the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the teaching of thy mother, for there shall be a chaplet of grace upon thy head and chains about thy neck. It's going to be like jewelry. So when your parents is giving you instructions, don't let it go in one ear and go out the other. That's right. Understand what they're trying to tell you. Don't say, man, y'all just getting old. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. You think that your parents haven't gone through some of the same things that you've been through? You think that the world was just created yesterday? <laughs> the world been here spinning for millennia. And humans been living on it, going through the same stuff. That's why the Proverbs that were written 3,000 years ago is still relevant today. Amazing. Think about it. Said, there's nothing new underneath the sun. What has been has already been done. Right. Let us go. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us lurk for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Casting our lot among us, let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Restrain thy foot from their path. Your man come up with a master scheme. Huh. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you, son, they got about, they got about 600,000 in the safe. This is easy, easy money. Easy money, I'm telling you. Mm. All we got to do, go up in there, we put some pressure on them, and they're going to give it up. This is things that you hear in the hood. When you live in the hood, this is people actually sit down all day, and they, they plot evil. They watch you come in and out. They watch what people do. They got people that actually study and plot for evil, right? So he come to you with the master plan, and you go, yeah. He said, all you got to do is you bring your father's car, and we just, you just drive us there. We're going to run up in there. We're going to get this money, and then we out. Hmm. So you say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to drive my father's car. I'm going to park around the corner. They're going to run up in there. But the way they made it sound so easy, it didn't easy. go that easy. Some people got murdered. But they ran out. And they got in your father's car. And they got away. But New York City got a million cameras. You didn't know that there were cameras, hidden cameras in that house. And when they came and they looked at the tape, they said, oh, OK, we know who that is. And let's follow. Let's see where they went. And they trace your father's car. And then they come to your house. And although you didn't go in there and you didn't, you didn't pull that trigger, guess what you are? Accomplice. Accomplice and accessory to the crime. Now you got some co-defendants. You know what a co-defendant is? I'm giving y'all the real. You know why? Because this is the world we living in. So now you got co-defendants. So now you can't go in there and say, well, you know, I, I didn't go into the house because, you know, so I was just waiting outside. I didn't know what they was doing. Because then you label a snitch. So now you got to deal with that end, and you got to deal with what you did. But from the beginning, if you didn't agree to the evil, and waiting in line and wait mm -hmm. for your neighbor's blood, you will never have been in that situation. This is how people get into trouble. This is how young men, young women, you can't even say just young men now, and young women get into trouble. This is the reality that we live in. This is the world that we live in. This is the neighborhoods that we live in. Always listen to discretion. Always, you, listen, it's a figure of speech. Cross the street when you see danger. It doesn't make you a chump. It makes you smart. Right. These, are the, these are the type of teachings that we need in order for us to grow. Let us go. 16. For their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Uh-huh. For in vain the net is spread in the eyes of any bird. And these lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk for their own lives. They lurk for their own lives. So you think you're spreading a net for the bird, right? The net is to catch the bird. You're trying to catch the bird slipping, right? But in reality, you setting the net up for yourself. Right. Because you go in and do something, and you figure it was easy pickings, and there was somebody in there with a gun, and then you lost your life. Because people know where there's a lot of money, you're going you to need something there to protect it. So these are things that we have to understand and we have to know. These are things that we're going to be presented with. Right. There's nothing new underneath the sun. If you hang around a circle, or, or a certain kind of people, that's what you are. Another saying my grandmother used to tell me, dime con quien andas y te digo quien tú eres. You know what that means? Dime con quien andas y te digo quien tú eres. You tell me who you hang with, and I'll tell you who you are. Hmm. Hmm. You tell me that. So from your company, how they act, they come, they come in your backyard, and all you hear is MF, N, MF. Say, so that's what you do. When you come around me, when you come around me, you act like the, the son that I love so much and do no wrong. But when you out in the streets, you do the same thing, boy. Mm. That's a, that they say, hey, birds of a feather do what? Flock together. They flock together. So these are things that we have to understand, and these are things that we have to know. Let us go. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, it take away the life. It taketh away the life of the owners thereof. You see? 
All of those who are greedy for gain, they take away the life of the owners thereof. I mean, innocent people lose their lives. You don't want to have a notch like that underneath your belt. You don't want to have to murder someone innocently because of something that you did or something, some master plan that you came up with. You know the way that you get money? You go to school, you get degrees, you work. It says by the sweat of your brow right. is how you're going to earn. Right. So put that in your heads from young. Stop being lazy. Stop playing video games all day. Go get you some of your job. You like money? Go work for it. That's right. Go pack some bags. You know you can still pack bags, right? <laughs> Go do something instead of thinking of a master plan. Because there ain't nothing but land inside my hand. Hmm. <laughs> Dig into my pocket all my money spent. I dig deeper, still coming up with Lent. But hmm. guess what? For you not to come up with Lent anymore, go do some work. No such thing, or I'm too young. The problem is that we have a mentality that a lot of our children have an, a mentality of entitlement. Hmm. I'm supposed to get this. You're not supposed to get. Only thing your parents have to do for you is they have to Put some clothes on you, and they don't have to be $200 jeans. It doesn't have to be $300 sneakers, and they don't have to be a $100 shirt. They just have to clothe you. They have to give you a place to rest, right, and some food. And when you start getting too old, they might cut you off from the clothing because you're old enough to go out there and do what you got to do. And gradually, they start cutting you off from certain things, and you got to bring in some money in the house. Never get used to working a job and not bringing something home and say, here you go, Abba, here you go, Ema. Even if it's $25, bring something in. I always say, when I was seven or eight years old, I used to have to cut grass with a machete. Not no, lo no, no lawn mower. I had to go out there with a machete and a cut stick and cut the grass in the backyard. I had to go pick peas off the trees, almonds off the tree. I had to go get corn. You, had to, you actually had to do real work. Mm -hmm. Yes. A machete. <laughs> a machete is just a real big knife. That's the best way I could describe it. That's used to, to cut branches and to cut, and to cut grass. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Let us go. Verse 20. Wisdom crieth aloud in the street. She uttereth her voice in the broad places. She calleth at the head of the noisy streets, at the entrances of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her, her words. Mm -hmm. How long, ye thoughtless, will you love thoughtlessness? And how long will scorners delight them in scorning? And Wisdom is at knowledge. every corner, calling out. That's but right. you have to be willing to listen to her. You see, wisdom is described in a feminine aspect because man is supposed to attach itself to wisdom, mm -hmm. right? And wisdom is what guides us. Mm -hmm. So once we get wisdom, wisdom is going to bring us to understanding of how we're supposed to live life. Y'all still working it out. You're still working out certain things in your mind. You don't know certain things. You don't quite understand how, why your parents are telling you certain things. But you have to trust that they have your best interests in mind. So when they're telling you to do certain things, you have to understand that when they're telling you, get off the video game and go read a book. You know why? Because in reading, in reading and understanding, there is your, your, your key to success. If you're lazy-minded, you will never get anywhere. That's right. You have to be able to do the things that are necessary for you to do in order to progress in life. If you don't do that, you're going to have a, 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 a regular um, Walgreens job, and, and you, you, you think you could survive on a Walgreens job in New York City? No. Y'all love New York City too much, so you're not going to survive in New York City with a Walgreens job. You could attain anything that you want. All you have to do is put your mind to it. You could be the, the first NBA player 
Israelite NBA player. Never tell no one, never let anyone tell you that you can't do it. You know why? Because there's always a first for anything. Said, so, man, but they're not going to accept me because I, I have to keep the shot by. And who said that? You can make the way. You could pave the way. You could be that first one that you're so great. Put it like this, Zion Williamson. You think if he said, well, you know, I'm not working, I'm not playing basketball on the Sabbath, with the skills that he got, you think somebody still won't take a chance on him? Maybe the great teams might pass him by, but the worst team going to be like, we could deal with that contract. You don't want to play on the Sabbath? Okay. And he go in there and the most high makes him greater than everybody. There is a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Because the, Yah, because the most high Yah will make the way. That's how it goes. Yah always makes the way for us. All the time. Let us go. 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Mm -hmm. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man attended. Mm -hmm. But ye have set, out, set at naught all my counsel. And with none of my reproof. Wisdom says she stretched out her hand, but no man would take hold of her. Think about that. Said, look, I'm here. Attain me. Grab me. But you don't want to do that. You won't read a book. You won't pick up the Torah, which is the key to your life. Mm -hmm. Read a chapter a day. Read a proverb a day. Right. And understand what you're reading. Don't let those words just go past you. You don't understand what a word means. When we were younger, you know what we did when we didn't understand a word? Dictionary. We looked in the dictionary. Y'all got Google. Yes. If you don't know how to sound out a word? You sound it out. Yes. But then if you don't know the meaning of a word, then what you supposed to do? Dictionary. There you go. But now you guys have Google, right? You could Google a word, and it will give you the answer. Am I right or wrong? What's your question? You had your hand up. You don't know? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't mind that, because that means they're listening. She's not letting nothing slip by her, so she can raise her hand anytime. I enjoy that. <laughs> Let us go. Verse 26. I also in your calamity will laugh. I will mock when your dread cometh. When your dread cometh as a storm. And your calamity cometh on as a whirlwind. When trouble and distress come upon you. Wisdom says she will laugh. Right. When your calamity come upon you. You know why? Because you refuse to listen. That's right. So listen to what your parents say. Read some books, put something in that head That's right. in order to keep you grounded. In order to keep you grounded, you need to read. Read is the key to success. Reading is the key to success. You know what they used to say about us? They used to say, if you want to hide anything from a black person, put it in a book. And because we don't read, we can find out the, the great things that's out there for us in life. You could become doctors and lawyers, engineers. All you have to do is read. So you put in the time when you're young, right? When you have the strength before the evil days come upon you. You know what the evil days are? It doesn't mean that you're going to be evil. The evil days mean that sickness is coming upon you. You got to go to 15 doctor's visits in a week. You got to do all this stuff because now you older and you got to stay in the doctor. You got to stay in the doctor. So while you have strength and you don't have any problems with you, read. While your mind is supple and can absorb all this stuff, read so that you can attain wisdom, get the knowledge and the understanding, and be able to become something great in life. Mm -hmm. That's what this life is about. Not what everything else is a smoke screen, Right? Yes. There you go. It said, buy wisdom and sell it not. That's another saying. It says, buy it, but then sell it not. So when we have brothers like Moray Arania who come out and give his services and teaching us something that's going to cost us thousands of dollars 
and he teaches something for a minimal price, that's a blessing because he's passing down a skill. He's passing down a skill that's really worth much more than what he's, what he's giving it for. Right? So these are the things that we look at, and that's how we build and we help each other. Right? But if you want to become a doctor, all you have to become a doctor, all you have to do is read. Now think about it. Doctors make six figures. Depending on what type of doctor you are, you make seven figures. All you have to do is read. So now if you, you know what seven figures is? When I say seven figures, what do I mean? Millions, right? When I say six figures, hundreds of thousands, right? So think about if all you got to do to reach that is read, I would start reading from now, from when I was seven. Everything about being a doctor, everything being about, about whatever. And when I don't understand a word, I'm going to look it up. Yes. How to start a bit already? Yeah, I want to read it, but... Your emo won't let you read it? No, not because she won't let me, because when I went to the library, it, it cost money. Oh, you couldn't just take the, the book out? I couldn't just take it, because they didn't have it in the library. Okay, so wait till they have it in the library, or maybe your emo could make that investment for you. All right? <laughs> let us go. Verse 28, then will they call me, but I will not answer. They will seek me earnestly, but they shall not find me. They should me. not find me. Don't call wisdom. Don't reach out to wisdom when it's too late. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting in the clink, you in the <laughs> box, and now you're calling out to wisdom. Yeah, yeah, I might give you a second chance, but at that point, it's too late. Right. When you had the understanding, then at that point, you should have been reaching out when wisdom was reaching out to you. Let us go. But that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yehovah. Uh huh. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Uh huh. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Listen, you gotta, you gotta, you you reap, right? Mm -hmm. What you sow. That's right. So if you sow evil and wrong, then that's what you're gonna reap out of life. That's right. So you have to take and uh, um, pay attention to what's being brought forth. Let us go. For the waywardness of the thoughtless shall slay them, and the confidence of fools shall destroy them. Uh -huh. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell securely, and shall be quiet without fear of evil. You see, the waywardness of the thoughtless shall slay them. Your own evil ways is going, is going to slay you. That's right. And it says, and the confidence of fools shall destroy them. When you confidence in, 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 in wicked things and in wicked ways, mm -hmm. right? Those things will destroy you. It says, but whoso hearken the front of me shall do it securely and shall be quiet without fear of evil. Let us go. Chapter 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and lay up my commandments with thee, so that thou make thy ear attend unto wisdom and thy heart inclined to discernment, yea, if thou call for understanding and lift up thy voice for discernment, if thou seek her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Yah. You shall find the knowledge of Yah. So your foundation is what? Torah, mm -hmm. right? Your foundation is Torah, and that's where you seek understanding of, of Yah mm -hmm. in the Torah. Once you find that and you have a firm foundation, right, then you go seeking out all the other things that you need to make yourself a better person. Mm -hmm. But your foundation is Torah. Let us go. For Yehovah giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and discernment. He layeth up sound wisdom for the upright. He is the shield to them that walk in integrity. You hear that? So for Yehovah giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and discernment. He layeth up the wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to them that walk in integrity. So these are things that we all have to do. You know what integrity is? You don't find yourself in vile situations. You, you, you carry yourself upright. That's integrity as a man, as a woman. You carry yourself in a manner that is pleasing before the Most High God and before men. Let us go. That he may guard the paths of justice and preserve the way of his godly ones. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and justice and equity, yea, every good path. It says that he may guard the paths of justice 
preserve, pre preserve the way of his godly ones, then shalt thou understand righteousness and justice, equity, yea, every good path. It's important for us. It's important for us to understand these things. Um, let us go. Let's go to the next one. For wisdom shall enter into thy heart, and knowledge shall be pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall watch over thee, and discernment shall guard thee, to deliver thee from the way of evil, from the men that speak for Once things. again, it reiterates these things. It says, knowledge shall be pleasant unto, unto thy soul, discretion shall watch over thee, over, over thee, discernment shall guard thee. Not ego, but discretion. Because ego makes you say, there's 20 guys there. I'm, 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 I'm tough. I'm going to walk through them. Hmm. <laughs> you really have to take that route. You've seen them two blocks away. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're young, your pride, because you can lift up the whole rack, you say, I could take on, I could take, I could destroy at least five of them by myself. Mm -hmm. That's your ego talking. <laughs> but discretion and discernment is going to teach you cross the street, man. Right. They're not even noticing me. I'm going to cross the street. I'm going to walk across the street. And the most I put a spirit on them not to even bother you. Mm -hmm. And you walk right past them. Right. But your ego is that part of you that you have to forsake. Because your ego tells you, I'm going to walk right through them. I don't care. And you call that being brave or whatever. But that in all reality is not a wise thing to do. But discernment and discretion tells you, man, cross the street. Ain't nothing soft about that. They said a wise man runs to fight another day. That's right. When you are number says, strive not with one that is mightier than thou. So if it says strive not with one that's mightier than thou, how are you going to strive with 20? They're definitely going to be mightier than just you. These are the things that wisdom teaches us. Let us go. 13. Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of evil, who are crooked in their ways and perverse in their paths to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the alien woman that maketh smooth her words. The alien woman that maketh smooth her words. Who is this alien woman? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the alien means someone that's strange to some, to a place, to someone, or to something, right? Let us go. That forsaketh the Lord of her youth. That, that what? That forsaketh the Lord of her youth. You got a lot of those out here. Listen, you have a lot of those women out here. What does it mean that she forsake of the Lord? It says the Lord? Little, little Lord. The Lord of her youth. She doesn't listen to her parents. The Lord of her youth is her husband. She forsook the Lord of her youth. She was married, right? And she just broke away. So I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And I live my life however. I live it in another town. I live it down yonder. And I live loose and I do what I want to do. Hmm. Let us go. And for, forget if the covenant of her God. And forget of what? The covenant of her God. The covenant of her God is that marriage promise and vow that she made with that man. And then it goes on and it says what? For her house sinketh down unto death, and her paths unto the shades. None that go unto her return, neither, they, neither do they attain unto the paths of life. It's not that they don't come out of the house. That's not what it means. You go in and out of the house. Right. But what it's saying is that the things that men and women do, right? Because she's not divorced. She don't have no paperwork to say that she's divorced. You going into someone's wife. You just attain to the path of death. So, as Israelites and children, y'all could put on earmuffs right now because I'm about ready to say something that y'all shouldn't listen to. Come on, children, put on earmuffs. <laughs> 
don't that one night stuff, that ain't for us. Meeting some woman and then you just, and that's what, and then you end up somewhere doing some, some activities, that's not for us. Because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're getting into. You could be going into someone's wife that never got no proper paperwork, that never divorced the way that she was supposed to divorce. She wasn't written a bill of divorce. She just walked away from her relationship. Those are things that we really have to think about. Say so a house, her house, it's a, it's a path to death. That means you marked because that is adultery. Let us go. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of, right, of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the wholehearted shall remain in it. The wholehearted shall, the perfect shall remain in it. Let's go. But the wicked shall be cut off from the land uh -huh. and the faithless shall be plucked up out of it. And the faithless shall be plucked up out of it, out of the land. So you want to be counted with the righteous. You want to be counted with those that do right. You don't want to be counted with the wicked. You don't want to be counted with the wicked. How are we looking? Three is long. Three is long. It is. <laughs> I'm going to end it right there. We can do the prayers. <laughs>